Hi, and welcome to this section of the Physics Tutor. And in this section, we're going to switch gears a little bit uh, from the last several sections where we were talking about Gauss's Law, using Gauss's Law to basically calculate the electric field or the charge inside of a Gaussian surface. This section, we're going to tackle the topic of what we call the electric potential. So here's where in electronics and electromagnetism, uh, things can start to get a little bit muddy if you're not careful and really make sure you understand the definition of everything. Up until now, we've talked about electric fields. We've talked about the fact that an electric field can exert a force on a charged particle if you put the particle inside that field. And that kind of, I think, can make sense because you can think back to gravity. And you can think, well, we've got a gravitational field. You put a mass in that gravitational field and a force you know, pops up. So there are differences between, uh, obviously, electricity or electric fields and gravitational fields. But the basic idea is the, sa the same. And actually, the form of the of the force law is the same between the two different sorts of things. But when we get into uh, electrostatics and electric fields, we start talking about the electric potential. A lot of times students get a little bit confused because they're not really sure how the electric potential really comes into play or how it really matters. And so what we're going to do in this section, uh, we're not going to do too many problems. This is going to be a derivation sort of section where I'm really going to try to take my time and explain through a ton of analogies exactly what the electric potential is and how it relates to the electric field and why, why we even care about it. And so in the next section after this we'll work some problems and what you're going to find is that this electric potential stuff is not difficult, it's not hard, but what you need to do is sort of once we get through it all and you understand what it is, you'll need to in your brain start thinking that when you're talking about an electric field um, the electric potential kind of goes hand in hand with it. And so we'll, we'll get there and you'll understand why in a, in a little bit, but that's basically where we're going. And to kind of cut to the chase and give you a little bit advanced preview of what we're studying, uh, I'm sure that everyone watching this video knows or has heard of the concept of a, a volt, right? Uh, of the, at least that word, a volt. And so we're going to start to introduce that terminology here in this section, and you'll see how it comes about. And obviously, volts and, and uh, all those things are um, super important in electric circuits. And so the terminology that we build on this section is going to go straight away into our discussion of circuits and make much more sense when we get there. And so I'm kind of building that foundation here. So definitely watch this section a couple of times if you need to, to make sure you understand what we're talking about. So, I could easily write down a couple of equations, literally about two or maybe three equations on the board. I could put them right here and tell you this is what electric potential is. And we could just go right into the problems. But that doesn't really build or promote any understanding um, because I think this is really a core thing. So what we're going to do is spend some time giving you the foundation. Um, let me take you back and teach this by way of an analogy. Everybody, you know, this stuff about electric field is pretty new to everybody watching the video as a new concept of understanding the math behind it, but everybody has a very good understanding uh, of gravity, right? Or at least an idea of what gravity is. You've studied it in physics, and then even before physics, you've had a lot of interaction with gravity, so everybody kind of has a good, warm, fuzzy feeling about gravity. So let's take a trip back to gravity and talk about um, how that works briefly, and you will see that what we're going to learn in this section is a direct analogy of that. So I'm taking you down this path on purpose to teach you this in the easiest possible way. Recall that uh, right here in this room, there's a gravitational field, right? That's what we call it. And it is it pulling me to the ground. It's always attractive. And uh, so we, we talked about that a lot in Physics 1. We also talked about the fact that there's a certain thing called gravitational potential energy, right? It's something you learned in Physics 1. In other words, if the ground, the floor, is right here below my feet, right? and I hold something so many meters above the ground, we can calculate the, we call it just the potential energy, but just to make sure that nobody's getting confused, I'm just gonna call it the gravitational potential energy, so you know I'm talking about gravity here. So we can calculate the gravitational, gravitational potential energy, it's very simple to calculate, uh, and they have a value, and it's a number in joules, it's so many joules of energy. And what that means is that this guy has a potential to do work. That's why we call it the potential, the, the potential energy of this thing. In other words, if I drop it, it's going to begin to move, and it's going to begin to convert that potential energy into kinetic energy. By the time it hits the ground, it will have converted all of its potential energy into kinetic energy. And so it can do work. I mean, if you had a, a button down there or a scale or something and it, and it hit the thing, then it would do work and it would push on that thing. And that's actual work that the gravitational field is basically doing on the environment. Um, by the things that we put in it. 
And we also learned that if we raise this item higher off the ground, it's going to have more potential energy than it did if you have it lower to the ground. And that makes sense because if you have something low to the ground, drop it, it's not going to be going very fast. But if you take something, uh, you know, 10 feet or, or 10 meters or whatever in the air, or 100 meters in the air, and drop it, it's going to have more kinetic energy. So therefore, it must have more potential energy up here. And we learned how to calculate. That's a very simple calculation. But it turns out, and, and what I'm going to take you on this path here is, this idea of a gravitational potential energy uh, has a direct kind of companion in the world of electric fields. Because, and I'll just kind of give you a little preview without writing anything down, just like in the gravitational potential energy case where we place an object in a, in a, in a uh, gravitational field and we can calculate its potential energy depending on purely where it's located and 